Schools are supposed to be a place where parents feel like their kids are safe and taken care of, right? Well, scary things can happen anywhere, and in the case of these three different lockdowns, the schools kind of set themselves up for it. One of the schools never even found the guy they were on lockdown hiding from. So this first story happened in October at a middle school. A kid that we'll call Heather was eating her lunch at the table when she heard four loud bangs. It was storming that day, so Heather thought it must have been thunder, but the rest of the school started flipping out and screaming. Then the security guard officer came out and told everyone to go into the common room. They started filing everyone into the common room ASAP. Like, even made the kids who were in line buying lunch throw their food away. Okay, that seems a bit dramatic. Like, why did they make them throw away their food when they could have just put it back or set it on the table or something? Why waste a perfectly good tray of food? But then again, this was a middle school cafeteria food, so maybe having them throw it away was a blessing in disguise. So everyone was coming into this room and no one knew what was going on. There were teachers guarding all the exits and security was trying to cover all of the windows with curtains. Heather's friend, Eric, went up to one of the teachers and asked what was going on. There was apparently a crazy man who had barricaded himself in front of his house, which was close to the school. He was threatening to take his own life and knock out the cops if they evicted him. Well, that's one way to avoid getting evicted. But also, how does that have anything to do with the school? So apparently, after this whole eviction stunt, this man was seen walking around outside the school staring at kids. The dude was also a registered sex offender, so I guess the staff was really freaked out about it and made the decision to just go on lockdown. Okay, so I agree that the whole situation is creepy and concerning, but to go on a full lockdown seems a little bit dramatic. Like, could they just first just get a security officer, monitor this dude, and have the cops come on site and handle the situation? I just think it's a bit odd that they literally went into a lockdown for a man staring at kids. I wonder how they explain that to the concerned parents. So the kids ended up staying in that room for an hour on lockdown. Oh my God, I bet they were so hungry. After everything was handled, whatever that means, the students were walked back to their class one by one. How were they going to just say it was handled and not go into detail about what happened? They seriously made these kids throw away their food, put them through an entire lockdown, and then left them in the dark with what actually went down. And we don't know much else about what happened that day. But Heather's friend Brandy had a super creepy story about this man. So Brandy lived down the street from this psycho dude. She told Heather that one Halloween she saw through the guy's window that he was cutting his arm and writing something in the liquid on his window. He wrote, don't come here or I'll kill you. What? That is so terrifying. Also, that is so extra that he went out of his way to write it in his own fluid. Is anyone gonna tell this dude that they make markers and paint for that kind of stuff? Since it was Halloween, everyone in the neighborhood assumed it was a weird way of decorating, but now they know that this man is insane and probably meant what he wrote. Oh yeah, and I didn't even think about him writing that on Halloween, so no one would find it suspect. That also makes me wonder if anyone ended up going up to his door for candy. Like, oh my God, this house is so committed to the whole Halloween thing. Like, they even wrote on the windows. We have to go there for sure. But what I can't get over is how weird that whole lockdown story is. Like the officers never explained what the banging noises were and never told the kids what was actually going on. This next story took place on a Friday afternoon right before spring break. For this story, we'll call the main student Jordan. Jordan was sitting in his seventh period calculus class playing a trivia game to pass the time when the dean came on in the intercom. He frantically told all the teachers to go into lockdown and said it wasn't a drill. Jordan's teacher freaked out, ran to turn off the lights, and got all the kids to huddle down in the back of the room. I would be panicking at this point. School lockdowns have always scared me, like something that, about the thought of just someone specifically coming out of their way to hurt kids just does not sit well with me. And it seems to be a terrifying situation experience in general. I remember lockdowns and when we did the drill, that was scary enough. I don't need to experience something real. So Jordan and his classmates had been sitting in the back of the room for about two minutes when the buzzing that typically came from a wall panel in the room stopped. Everyone in the room assumed the school just had their power cut. Oh no. Not the power. That automatically makes things so much scarier. Like there's a reason most horror movies take place in the dark. Like it's a straight fact that dark equals more scary. Jordan and his classmates heard a man running down the hallway screaming. And at this point, two girls in the class started crying. Oh yeah, I'd be crying too. And the worst part about this lockdown is that you have to try to stay quiet. 
We're trying so hard not to make noise by crying, but that's impossible. So a man is running down the hallway and screaming and the two girls are crying. The screaming kept getting louder until the man started pounding on the locker saying he was going to egg everyone. That's not concerning at all. Then the banging moved from the lockers to Jordan's classroom door. And then the biggest school lockdown no-no happened. One of the girls who had been crying screamed out, no! The man kept banging even harder and started to shout, open up! At this point, the two girls who were trying to silently cry were crying out loud. So everyone in the room was panicking, thinking they were done for when the man stopped banging and just ran down the hallway away from Jordan's classroom. Wait, hold on. He just ran back down the hallway? How did he go from wanting to slay them all to just giving up like that? I don't understand this guy. Then 10 minutes later, the dean came over the intercom. He said that a mentally unstable person had come into the school and attacked a lady at the front desk who screamed and ran out of the building. The other teachers and staff in the area were freaking out and didn't know if the stranger who went after her had weapons or not. Oh. And did I mention that this happened before the school had cameras installed? And apparently they didn't even have a security guard on campus or anything. So they didn't really know what was happening or where this man went. So my question is, is how does a school not have cameras or even a security officer? How is that safe? It makes me wonder how much stuff these kids actually got away with or how many other stragglers snuck in. So since the school staff didn't know what was happening, the dean got over the intercom to tell everyone to go into lockdown while they did a sweep of the hallways and classroom. They didn't end up finding anyone, so the dean got back on the PA system and told the teachers to go back to teaching with the doors locked and to not let anyone one of the students go. How do they know that this man isn't still running through the halls if they don't have cameras or a security guard? Like the dean is just guessing at this point and gambling with all the kids' lives. Oh, yeah. And there's a bad guy running through the halls with a possible rifle, but we don't see him anymore. Well, one of the janitors was working the overnight shift when they found the man in the school. Yeah, they found him inside the school. So that means he must have been in there the whole time. And how did no one else see him earlier in that day? The man was asleep and apparently had a 44 Magnum sticking out of his pocket. Okay, so, he literally had a revolver in his pocket the whole time and must have never used it. They dodged a bullet with that one, literally. And the janitor called the cops, but must have done something to accidentally wake up the man because by the time the police could arrive on scene, the man was gone and was never seen again. Wait, the police couldn't find the man at all? Did they even check the whole school? He couldn't have gone too far. Like if the janitor had just called on him, how do we know he didn't just sneak into the closet or something to hide? I also wonder if all the students and the teachers just came into the next day and tried to act like nothing happened. Oh, good morning class. Disregard the most confusing traumatizing event that happened yesterday and let's pretend like our school isn't dangerously open to the public for a crazy man to come in, but let's go over yesterday's homework. I have to say, all I hope is that they finally installed those cameras. And last, but certainly not least, another lockdown story. So a 22 year old guy who we'll call Matt had just graduated college and got a job. His new job was at his old high school, which is a little awkward in the first place, but wait until you hear what his job actually was. He was hired as a tech intern in the school basement. The basement, like the tech intern part is fine, but I just think it's so weird that he was put in the basement. And it was probably already awkward that he was working with all of his old teachers. Well. Even though Matt was in the basement, it was actually pretty nice. He shared an office down there with two other people. In the basement office, they decked it out with too many fridges, a flat screen TV, and even air conditioning. Okay, but no matter how hard you try, it's still a basement. So Matt got this job from his old teachers who recommended him for it. Everything was running smoothly until the unthinkable happened. Matt was alone in his office on his lunch break, eating a sandwich when he got a call. It was from one of the school staff members. She said the school was going on lockdown because someone got into the school and may be armed. So here's Matt alone in his office in the basement just a few weeks into his new job when he's told they're going on lockdown. Matt turned off all the lights, but the door to the basement didn't even have a lock on it, so he couldn't lock the door. Wait, this whole setup is so tragic. And since he's in the basement, 
It's not like you could plan a window scape or anything like that either. Matt turned off his computer screen light, texted his two coworkers who were nowhere to be found, and hid in the dark. I would be so nervous if I were him. Like, I used to get scared playing hide and seek, so I can't even imagine playing it with higher stakes. Matt had been hiding in the basement for like 20 minutes when the door opened. Matt heard footsteps and couldn't tell if they were from his coworkers, so he stayed quiet. The footsteps got louder, so Matt crawled underneath the desk. Then Matt got a text and his phone dinged. Bro, everyone knows you have to keep your phone on silent on a time like this. At this point, it was obvious to the mysterious footstep person that Matt was in there, so he came out from underneath the desk. The guy was wearing a red flannel, jeans, and a hat. He told Matt, it's okay. I'm just down here hiding with you. Matt asked what was going on, but the guy didn't answer and just asked him where the exit was. Matt pointed him towards the exit and then asked the guy who he was. The guy said he was coming to pick up his kid from school when he was told to hide. Then Matt got the scariest text ever from one of his coworkers. Matt's coworker told him that some... Sheesh. Dude, this is creepy. We're telling scary stories of the thunderstorm? <laughs> Matt's coworker told him that some guy with a Glock had hit one of the teachers with a He said that the guy who did it was wearing a red shirt and a hat. Hold on, stop. That means that that guy hiding with Matt is literally the intruder and he has a weapon and they're in the basement together. What a perfect disaster. Well, after reading that text, Matt lost his cool and was obviously showing it on his face. Yeah, how do you hide the fact that you're just found out that you're sitting next to an intruder with a Glock? Since he knew the bad guy was onto him, Matt got up and ran for the exit. When Matt was running out, the flannel man fired a at him, but it remounted off of something in the room. Matt was able to make it upstairs without getting hit, and the police were able to catch and arrest the bad guy moments later. The teacher who was hurt ended up surviving, and it turned out that the bad guy had just some drama with that teacher. Okay, I don't care how mad you are at someone, but you don't just go breaking into a school with a firearm and make the entire school go on lockdown because you had beef with one person out of the whole school. That's just selfish in my opinion. And poor Matt didn't even know any of the school except his old teachers, so how was he supposed to know the flannel man wasn't really the parent of a kid? Or maybe he was a parent and the reason he was mad at his teacher is because his kid got a bad grade on something. Well, all of these stories are wild, and what is with all of these weird schools. Like, one of them shuts down the school for a guy who looked creepily at kids, the other doesn't have any cameras on campus, and the last one has a makeshift office in the basement where they stick the new guy? Well, at least all of these stories ended up without someone losing their life, thank God. Well, that we know of. Thanks for watching, and Cupcakes, always remember to keep your phone on silent when you're hiding from someone. Just a tip.